The bay used to have 196,000 acres of tidal wetlands surrounding it. That was in the late 1800s. Since that time, we've lost a little over 90% of those wetlands. Fortunately, in the last few decades, we've begun restoring those, and that's exactly what's going on here at Sears Point. The Land Trust bought this property in 2004 with the idea of restoring on a watershed scale, restoring the grasslands in these hills leading all the way down across the pastures, farmland, seasonal wetlands, ultimately out to the bay. The plan is to restore a thousand acres of tidal marsh and that's what you see before you, inundated now in water, fresh water from recent storms, which will be salt water when we breach the levee in about 10 months. Roughly 120 years ago, this was all reclaimed for what you see, farmland, infrastructure, and that's the story around the bay. So one of the things that happens when you seal off land that once was tidal marsh and no longer let the tides in is it begins to aerate. It's exposed to oxygen regularly and farming and compaction from farm equipment, and that land begins to sink and all the land around us has sunk about six to seven feet. There are a few rather unique and innovative features in this project that distinguish it from many of the others, and this project has learned from so many of the others. The first one is the marsh mounds. Marsh mounds are simply that, mounds of dirt, and their purpose Although they're sticking out now, they'll be under the tides when the tides do come in. They're not nesting islands for birds. They are, in fact, wave suppression mounds. The reason for that is we need to bring this land up seven feet. We need to build seven feet of soil. You can't do that in water that is wavy with lots of suspended sediment. We want it to fall out. Keep this area as calm as it looks today will be pretty hard but something approximating that, and we'll have a marsh sooner than later. So another interesting feature here, I'm standing on a levee that was built, oh, maybe 20 years ago. And you can see it's a pretty steep levee, maybe a three to one, maybe a five to one slope. This doesn't offer a lot of room when the tides come in up against the side of the levee for wildlife to escape. We have built behind me a levee that is far larger and has a much more gradual slope that will eventually be planted with a number of plant species offering refuge during the very high tides. So this is the site where a lot will change in about 10 months. Behind me, you can see a large bare area. This is our old levee. This was a levee that was originally built in the late 1800s. It's gonna come down, pieces of it are. The breach will be about 300 feet wide. There will be a second breach about a mile that way. So we'll have two breaches, one straight to the bay and one to a neighboring tidal creek. And all the levee in between, that mile of levee will be lowered so that we'll have as much water coming into the site as possible. One of the most surprising pieces of the project has been to see how quickly Birds and other wildlife have responded to the flooding of the site with stormwater. While most of the project is about restoration, wildlife habitat, public access is a very big component of the project, and we're creating a two and a half mile section of the Bay Trail on top of our new levee. We welcome you to come and walk the trail yourselves and experience the renewal at Sears Point. And we expect full public access by early 2016.